Welcome folks. Today I want to share with you what the Cotter change model is, why you want to know how to use it, and how it's the foundation for pretty much everything that happens behind pretty much every business or organization out there. My name is Anthony Taylor. I'm the managing partner at SME Strategy. We help organizations create and implement their strategic plans. And at the heart of that is really being able to motivate people, help them work their best, and help them move forward to create a new reality for their business, for their organization, or for themselves. And so I've seen a couple different change models out there. My personal favorite is the Cotter change model. It speaks in simple English. It's really easy to understand. It goes in simple steps. And you're probably doing many of these things already. But I think after watching this video, if you're able to incorporate the entire model in sequence, in order, you're going to get much better results in your transformation and your leadership efforts. So let's get into the Cotter change model, what it is, how to use it, and why it's important. So I'm going to walk you through each of the steps of the model. And we're going to start at the start. Number one, create urgency. You know, anything that you want to create, it needs to be urgent enough to do. The, the benefit of the future needs to be greater than the pain of change. So if it's not urgent, if there isn't a reason to do it right now, then why should you do it? So as an organization or as a leader, you need to either manufacture urgency or highlight the urgency of any change initiative. You know, we just went through COVID and everybody had to work remote. You know, we might have been talking about working remote for a really long time. It wasn't until there was a great enough urgency to make that change move forward. You know, if your doctor tells you you can't eat chocolate ever again or you're going to die, you're going to stop eating chocolate because there's a significant urgency around it. So how can you create urgency with your team in order for them to really understand why we need to do this, why we need to do this now, regardless of what that this is? Number two is develop or build a guiding coalition. So it's a coalition, a group of people that are going to help you communicate, guide, and coordinate the plan. Build your team around that urgency. Get your people together and be able to begin moving the change forward. So if you're in the context of a strategic planning session and you're trying to move planning with your team, it might be your board, it might be your senior leadership team, it might be a project team, whoever it is, first create the urgency, then build the group of people around to start driving that project and that plan forward. Third is develop the change vision. What is that future that we want to accomplish? What does success look like? Where are we going? Being able to clearly articulate this new future that is distinct and different from where we're at right now. As I said earlier, the benefit of the future needs to be greater than the pain of change. So what is that ideal outcome that we're working towards that is going to inspire and guide people moving forward? It needs to be somewhere that they want to go. It needs to be somewhere that they see themselves being part of. But in order to be able to do that, it needs to be clear on the outset before they go anywhere. Number four, once you have that clear vision, then you need to communicate the change vision for buy-in. You know, people won't buy into something if they don't see how it applies to themselves, why they should care. And so the key part of that is getting alignment and buy-in for this new vision. What's in it for them? what's in it for you, and they need to be able to see that future as being worthwhile enough to go through the change. If it's not worthwhile enough for them, then why should they change? It's just too much work. And the other key part I want to communicate here is the part about buy-in. If they don't buy in, you've got nothing. They might say yes, they might give you like a little bit of a head nod, but if they're not bought into it, they're not going to keep going when it gets tough. So number four, communicate a change vision for buy-in. Number five, empower broad-based action. So we've created urgency, we've got our group, we've created the vision, we've got people bought into the vision, and now it's about allowing people, creating the space for people to contribute broadly, make it easy for them to move it forward, 
make the system of change easy so that everyone can contribute and everybody can be a part of it. As a leader, I want you to consider that there's more other people than there are of you. So in order to make the change process easy, make it easy for others to contribute and move it forward. So remove silos, remove processes that don't need to be there, allow people to contribute, give them the space to make decisions and take ownership of it. Once they take ownership of it, then it makes it a lot easier to drive forward as a leader. Number six, generate short-term wins. You know, if we wait for 10 or 15 years before we see the fruits of our labor, you know, it's not going to sustain the momentum that we need. So long-term change starts with short-term wins, you know, baby steps, so to speak. What I like to say, the best way to eat a dinosaur is one bite at a time. So share your small wins early and often, you know, rally your team around those wins and really make sure that there's constant progress being made so people can see that it's moving forward. If you think of inertia, something standing still, is one of the greatest forces on earth. In order to move something that has been standing still for such a long time, it takes a lot of energy. So that energy is gonna be generated through short-term wins. Number seven, don't let up. So you've got your team, you've got everybody moving forward, you see this vision, they're bought in, they're engaged, they're moving forward, keep going. You know keep going, keep building, keep getting bigger wins. You know, don't stop until the future has been accomplished. You know, keep building structures, keep building processes, especially for strategic plans. That's why you hear a lot of strategic plans that end up as shelf plans. Is there's been a lot of excitement for the first couple of months and then it dies down because something else sort of took its place. Or if you've ever been to a motivational speaker, you might have been motivated for a couple days and then you lose steam after that because you forgot about it. So a successful change effort, especially those that are multi-year or multi-year projects, take a lot of energy just to continue the momentum. So what can you do as part of your planning process, as part of your leadership, as part of your communication to support moving this plan forward? So how do you do that? Really, you need to incorporate change into the culture. That change isn't a one-time activity. It's that really is a process, is a way that we do things. You know, connect the success to behaviors. James Clear, who wrote The Atomic Habits, you know, really talks about ingraining them and habit stacking. You know, if you can add actions to both positive and or negative things, that you will continue or more likely to enforce that behavior over time. So how can you develop habits, not just actions, into your processes to support moving the organization forward? You know, that is going to support the change much longer than you having to remind people every day. You know, what can you put in place to incorporate change into the culture so that you have a culture of change, not just a project that you're trying to move forward? So in summary, the eight steps from Cotter. Number one, create urgency. Why do this? Why do this now? Number two, build a guiding coalition. Who are the people behind your team that are going to move this forward? Number three, develop a change vision. What is that place you're trying to get to? Why is it important? Number four, communicate the change vision for buy-in. Allow people to see what that future is and get them engaged. Number four, empower broad-based action. Allow them to contribute to that new future and how to move that forward. Number six, generate short-term wins. You know, really celebrate those wins and keep that momentum going. Build momentum and keep it going, which is number seven. Don't let up. You know, you might be tempted after you've got a lot of progress to celebrate and get off track. No, it's really the time to keep, to double down and to keep moving forward. And number eight, incorporating the change into the culture. Make it part of your organizational DNA to be able to move these things forward. You know, again, if you're trying to move forward a one-year project, a three-year strategic plan, a five-year, 10-year transformation, or any sort of large-scale project, you want to incorporate each one of these steps in action. Don't skip any, because if you skip any, you're going to miss really the opportunity of transformation in order to move what you want to accomplish forward. And you need something big enough 
to move it forward. So if you have a big program that you want to move forward, a big change or a big transformation that you're trying to accomplish, you know, get a great partner to help you. You know, one of the reasons you might want to have a partner is you're going to get your project done sooner. You're going to get the benefits faster and it's going to be easier. Plus, you're going to be able to expand your ability to create the change and expand your ability as a team, as an organization to accomplish even greater things. So to do that, be sure to click the link to schedule a no obligation consultation. By the way, just so you know, I just that was the Cotter change model in action right there. So I'll let you replay the video. You can see how I use the Cotter change model for that. But really, you know, if you're looking for somebody to support you in moving that big transformation forward, be sure to reach out to us so we can uh, share with you our process for leading change, our strategic planning process, and really see if we're a great fit to be a partner as you move forward this change so you don't have to do it all by yourself. So once again, my name is Anthony Taylor. I'm the managing partner at SME Strategy. We help organizations create and implement their strategic plans by getting their teams aligned and clear on where they want to go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any others. And if you have any other feedback on how you've used the Cotter change model successfully, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. So thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.